Hello everyone, and welcome to Python programming practice. In this episode, we are going to be covering leet code number 11, container with most water. This is a medium difficulty problem. So we'll probably have to think about our approach for a little bit before we can start coding. So let's go ahead and read the description here. Given n non-negative integers, a1 through an, where each represents a, a point at a coordinate, i, a sub i, n vertical lines are drawn such that the two endpoints of line i is at i, a sub i, and i, zero. So basically, they're drawing vertical lines up from the x-axis. Find two lines which together with the x-axis forms a container such that the container contains the most water. I think for this problem, it's probably easiest just to look at the little graphic down here to understand what they're talking about. Note, you may not slant the container and n is at least equal to 2. So we won't have to worry about containers that don't have at least two lines that actually form a container. So let's look at this image here. So basically what they're talking about is there's going to be n lines drawn up from this x axis here. And we're supposed to find out which of them, which two lines together can contain the most water. So they're giving an example where these two red lines here that are seven tall well this one is seven tall this one is eight tall are um seven units apart so the total water contained then is the distance they are apart which is seven times the height um i guess the height of the lower line so seven times seven is the area here and that means the container holds 49 units and that must be the largest one possible in this configuration, so that would be the result. That's what it's saying down here. So in the case of this example, our input would be those numbers that de define the lengths of all those lines in order, and the expected output then would be 49, which is the total area of that largest container. So now let's pull over to the code editor here. So I'm going to pull up an image of that example so that we can think about how we might approach this problem. So if we examine this example, we can find a couple of key insights that should enable us to code up a solution that's going to be faster than an O of n squared brute force solution. The first is noticing that the area depends on the distance between the two line segments. So for instance, the first container that we could make with the two line segments the furthest apart would be this one. And the area of this container would be equal to one times the distance between them, which is eight, because there's eight total bars. So that would only be eight. But we can notice something here. The area is limited by the height of the shorter of the two line segments. So in this case, the shorter line segment here is only length one. So it doesn't matter that this line segment here is seven tall. The only thing that matters is the shorter of the two. So for instance, if we were to move in one here and, and use this as the line segment on the right-hand side, well, that doesn't change anything because this is still only length one. So after making that observation, we know that with this as our starting endpoint on the left-hand side, we can never get an area bigger than this eight area that we started with. It doesn't matter how big the line segments on this right-hand side get, it'll always be limited by this one on the left-hand side. So that means if we start with the leftmost bar as our leftmost point and the rightmost bar as our rightmost point, the only way that we can get an area that will be larger than this is by moving the bar on the lower side up to the next one to see if it's actually taller. So in this case, the only way to get a bar bigger than this eight length bar would be to check the next one over and see if it's taller and results in a larger area. In this case, it's, it is taller, 
So we could check this next area, which is actually the solution, and say that, oh, that was larger than the previous one, so we'll save this as the new largest area. And then now we have two different endpoints where this endpoint is actually shorter now than this one. So we could do the same thing, except instead of stepping in from the left, so now we could step in from this end and say, well, is this line segment going to result in a larger area? No, because it's shorter than the one we already saw. And now we could check this one, and that's actually taller. So we'd have to check this next area and see if it's larger. And it's not, because we know the solution is the blue shaded area. And we could continue in this fashion, checking the area, then checking which of the two line segments that define the bucket is shorter, and move in one from that side. Either if it's on the right-hand side, we'd move in one to the left, and if it's on the left-hand side, we'd move to the next one on the right. And we could just continue doing that, checking the areas and seeing if it's larger than the one we've already saw. And once there's no area left or the, or the two segments are next to each other, we could just exit. We should be left with a largest area that is the largest of the entire array and will solve the problem. So let's go about trying to code this up. So let's go back and think about the things we're going to have to store in order to make this work. So we need to keep track of both endpoints. We're going to start with this endpoint and this endpoint in hand. And we're also going to need, tr need to keep track of the largest area we've seen so far. For this problem, it would start out with eight. And then we're gonna have to have some kind of loop that moves in depending on which endpoint is shorter and checks the area for the next bucket. So basically, the first one, this is shorter, so we'd move in, check this area. And the next iteration, we'd move in one this way, check this area. The next one, we'd move in this way again, check this area, etc. If they're tied, I guess it wouldn't matter which side we'd move in from, so we can figure out which to do, but that shouldn't matter. And then eventually, we're going to be at a point where, say, our two endpoints are this and this. We'll check one last time, and then when we know they're one away, we can just exit. So let's try to code this up here. So we need to start off by keeping track of our starting point and our endpoint, which are going to be indices in the array that we're given. So we'll start from the first index, which in Python is index zero, and we'll end, our initial ending index will be the last index. So the end will just be equal to the length of the input list. Um, well, minus one because of the zero indexing factor. And we also have to keep track of the size of the largest area we've seen so far. So we'll just, we'll just initialize that to zero to start off with, and then we'll have a check that updates it every time we see something bigger, which it'll be updated immediately after the first check, but that's fine. So now we need a loop that allows us to make all of our sequential checks while there are still buckets to check. And as I just said, the word while, we're probably going to need to use a while loop to do this because we're actually not iterating over every element of the array sequentially. We want to iterate from whichever endpoint is shorter, and a for loop wouldn't be the right thing to do that. So we're going to have to figure out a way to do that with a while loop and exit when the start and endpoints are next to each other. So how are we going to do that? We're going to say while something, I guess while the starting point is i suppose we can just do not equal to the endpoint because we're going to either be adding one to the starting point every iteration or subtracting one from the endpoint so eventually they're going to be equal and when they're equal it means we've checked every bucket so far and we can just exit so we'll say while the starting point is not equal to the ending point yet we then have to check the current area that we're looking at. So we'll say the next area is equal to, um, well, it's defined by the distance between the two indices times the height of the shorter of the two line segments. So we'll say the minimum of height start 
which is the height of the first line segment, and height end, which is getting us the shorter of the two line segments. And that should be multiplied by the distance between those points, which is just their difference. So the end point minus the start point would give us the distance between them. So that should calculate the area. Now we have to update the largest bucket we've seen so far if this new next area is bigger than it. So we'll say if next area is greater than the largest we've seen so far. We will update it and set largest equal to the next area that we just looked at. And now finally, we're going to have to update our start point or our end point. Whichever one is shorter, we're going to step in one in the appropriate direction. So let's do that. If the height of the start point is let's say it doesn't matter which way we go here so less than the height of the endpoint then we're going to increase the start by one plus equals one and if it's not bigger then we have to decrease the endpoint by one step in one from the end like we discussed so this code should achieve the effect that we wanted stepping in one each time from whichever end is shorter and calculating each area. So after this whole while loop runs and exits, we should be left with the largest area in hand in that largest variable. So let's go ahead and return that at the end. And this should be now a working solution to this problem. So I am going to go ahead and hit the submit button here and then we'll pull over to the result, it's saying it's judging right now. All right, so we got a success here, runtime of 128 milliseconds. So even though we did get a working submission here, there's actually something we can still do that might allow us to get a better submission. And to look at what that might be, let's actually pull back and go to our little example that we were working with before we started coding. Now what we did is calculate n different areas. So we started off by calculating this area, then stepping in one, calculating the next area, stepping in one, calculating the next area. But we know from how we understood the problem that we can only see a larger area if the height of the next bar that we're stepping in from goes up. So like for this step, for instance, when we're stepping from here to here, we already should know that this area is gonna be smaller than the one we just calculated because this can only increase if the height of that bar increased above the tallest one we'd seen at this end so far. So we can actually skip calculating that area mm -hmm. if we're able to store that value and just check if it's larger or not. So several of these area checks are going to be able to be skipped, actually most of them. That one can be skipped. This one, we actually can't skip because it gets taller. But once we've calculated this, every other step in is, is a step that's not as tall as the ones that we've seen at the two ends so far. So if we can add some checks for that in the code, it would allow us to avoid some of these area calculations, which could potentially speed up the code. It, it will mean when there's more code, but it seems to me that doing a few simple logical checks and having a couple more variables to keep track of that might be less computation time than actually having to calculate this whole area. So let's go ahead and implement this in our code to see if that is the case. Pull back over here. So basically what we needed to do, in addition to what we've already done, is keep track of what the largest already seen value was for the height of bars at the start and at the end. And then we can check those and essentially skip iterations of our while loop when we see heights that haven't increased. So we're, what we're gonna do here is we'll say, keep track of a new variable here, previous start, which will be equal to zero, and the previous end, which will also be equal to zero. Now within this loop at the very beginning, we can just check to see if the new height we're looking at is bigger than the largest one we've seen already. And if it's not, we can just skip 
that iteration of the loop entirely and not calculate the area. So if the height of start is less than, oops, that should be inside there, is less than the previous start, well, then we haven't found a height that can allow the area to increase at all. So let's just immediately go to the next one and say continue, which goes to the next iteration of the loop. And also, if the height of end is less than the previous end, we'll do the same thing. We'll immediately subtract one and go to the next one and continue. And now all we need to do is update the previous start and previous end when we are moving them in. So we can just do that down here. When we are iterating them, we'll also update the previous start or previous end as necessary. So previous start equals height start. Basically, any time we found one that increases, which has already been checked for up here, we're passing any ones that didn't increase. So any time it did increase, it'll get down to this part of the code. And in that case, we can set a new previous start. And we'll do the same thing here, but for the end. So do that and say previous end is going to be updated. But now it is skipping doing that extra calculation of areas when we know that the size couldn't have increased because the height of the bar hasn't increased. So I'll go ahead and click submit on this one as well and see what we get here. It is pending. Let's pull over and see what we get. So we got 112 milliseconds this time. And this submission was faster than 99.48% of other Python 3 submissions. So we did manage to make the code a bit faster by skipping some of those calculations. So I hope this provided a good example of how you can think about making a solution ahead of time to direct how you're going to write the code and, and also ways to add to an existing working solution in order to speed it up a little bit. So thanks for watching and keep coding.